what are you seeing, you know, in the digital transformation space? Uh, how are you seeing that actually playing out in India? Do you think this is a real change? Or do you think this is also something like, uh, you know, which will again sort of uh, recede back into the way it was? Uh, how are you seeing this change? We had one sort of the big dot com sort of bubble at the, you know, in the 2000, 99, 2000, the Y2Ks and then the different things. But I think at that time, the market was still not mature enough from an India perspective. It started happening in, in the US and elsewhere. But in India, I think it was still taking time. But this time when I see, I really see the difference. And the difference is today, it's not about, um, you know, um, uh, digitization was a nice word. It was nice to have word. But today, people are saying, I can actually increase my customer loyalty. I can actually increase my sales. I can actually decrease my cost. I can actually do things faster. And interestingly, digitization is also leading to two interesting things, which is on environment and diversity. Because of how you're able to do it, you travel less, you do everything else. So your environment is much better, as well as your diversity, the ability to have more people, right? And, and not necessarily have a set of people. So some of the big trends that, I, that I'm seeing, and this is in, in some sense a, a real continuum that I'm seeing is clearly one is the whole digital cloud, every company is on a, on a, you know, we did a survey as well in Asia Pacific as well as in India. Every, every company is on the path. There's nobody who's saying that, you know, I don't want to get onto the path. They're only worried about are they getting there fast enough and are they able to be ahead of the curve because just being with the pack may not help being ahead of the curve. The second is a lot of business models are changing. I mean, the earlier, you know, the, the whole direct to consumer models you know, anytime, anywhere. I think that is changing and therefore companies have also had to evolve. We've looked at some very traditional companies around the who, you know, make cookers and things like that. Now, they have never been into this space and digitization because they said, you know, people will come to our shop and see the cooker and then buy it. But today their online sales are more than their offline sales. So clearly, but India as a country will always have the physical and the digital environment, the digital environment really going on. The third is the, the trend is of the work and the workforce. So the, the, the work, the workplace and the, you know, the workforce, those three are also evolving in terms of the trend. So we see that a uh, couple of also things, a couple of things, other things that we see is in the digital world, it's now no more about uh, a particular person trying to, um, you know, solve a problem. There's an ecosystem now that is coming together uh, much more uh, to solve a problem. And finally, I think there is a blurring of industry. So really, if you look at financial services that is now getting into you know health that is getting into mobiles that is getting into many other things so there's more lot more blurring so these things i would say the convergence of industries the digitization these trends will continue and i'm seeing indian companies also looking at as a leapfrog opportunity to actually be better than even the rest in the western world i think that's something that uh, you know i clearly see as well maybe just taking on that i mean you know um, salesforce is born in the cloud company doing you know phenomenally well. You don't just talk about digital, you talk about transformation. So what is really Salesforce doing to sort of, you know, in some sense, fast track this whole digital transformation? The times have changed. Uh, the VUCA world that we used to talk about in conferences all the time is actually here. The fourth industrial revolution is actually here. And therefore, you know, the way we do business itself needs to change. Uh, we also believe that, you know, this is an answer for India. Because, you know, India is a very populous nation. We don't have very large transaction sizes. We have small ticket transactions, but they're very large in volume. Now, if you really want to serve one and all, which should be the goal, because, you know, exclusion is not the way out, inclusion is, if that is to be done, the only way it can be done is by using technology. There is no other ways of doing it. And I have experienced that First hand, you know, when we did the financial inclusion program like the PMJDY, the Jandhan Yojana, we'd been trying to do financial inclusion for 14 long years. It wasn't happening. It happened in PMJDY. Why did it happen? Because there were a few enablers. There was the, the UID, that is the Aadhaar Authority, which gave us the KYC details. There was the mobile that gave us ubiquitous access. And there was the communication network, you know, which enabled everybody to sort of get together in real time. So I think, you know, it was technology that powered all of this. And with that realization, we understand today 
that if you look at a client today, a look at a consumer today, that consumer wants everything to be as per their requirements. They need to be able to get the stuff that they want. That means there has to be hyper-personalization and they want to get it if necessary at 3 a.m. in the night in the comfort of their bedroom. Okay, so the generation is a far more impatient generation. The generation wants to do things in their own particular way. They don't want to be sort of, you know, locked into a certain system in order to do it. And the fact is that they want that, you know, things should be as simple as possible. Now, a combination of all of this cannot happen unless you, have, you go digital. And while you are going digital, what does it really mean? Because you know, when I was in the bank, for instance, and I was telling them we need to go digital, there were people who came to me and told me, we already have mobile banking, we already have internet banking. What is digital? We already are digital. And you know, telling them what is digital was very difficult. How do you explain something that is actually, you know, very difficult to envisage because it's all virtual. And therefore, as a counterintuitive measure, I actually created seven branches, which we called in-touch branches, which looked absolutely different from the bank branches that they had been used to. It was all screens. It was individual workspaces. It was tables, you know, like out of Star Trek with again screens on them. There was one area that was open 24 by seven, where you could do self-service for every single thing that you could think of, enough machinery to get you to do your cash deposit, your cash withdrawal, your check deposit, your requisitioning a checkbook, everything was possible over there by yourself. So, you know, the whole, all of these branches, again, we put in malls, not necessarily places where you put bank branches, right? And the idea was that not only consumers, but also our own staff would come during the you know, off time, which is during the weekends when people normally visit malls and just play around in these branches. Even the people over there, the people who were attending to these uh, customers, were dressed absolutely differently, dressed casually, dressed smartly, not in the typical banker's clothes at all. And then, you know, you could come there and open an account in as little as 20 minutes and walk out after 20 minutes with your own personalized debit card. Okay, so even that was getting printed in these branches. Now, the idea wasn't that, you know, we would make a huge profit out of those branches. The idea was that our people needed to know what digital is all about. And when you really get to understand digital, you understand the power that you get because you have a lot of information which you are not really using. But if you use that information for the benefit of that particular person, then that person actually can get benefited. You don't have to have a retail home loan pricing of 6.7%. Depending upon what that person's actual you know, transactions are, that person can get a pricing as low as 4.5% or maybe a pricing of 9%, depending upon where you actually see them. So I think, you know, this is the story that Salesforce is trying to tell that, you know, you can hyper-personalize, you can handle a very large number of people, scale is feasible, but scale with hyper-personalization is feasible. That's the story that we are trying to tell. And it's not only a question of B2B, it is now B2B2C. So all of that journey is something that people can make without having to sort of skip a beat. And again, the fact is that, yes, you will be dependent on technology, but this is technology. For instance, the I think the power of Salesforce lies in the fact that we not only give you the technology, but we don't walk away from it. It's a subscription model and we upgrade it every four months. So you are getting upgrades free of charge every four months so that you are in sync with whatever is happening. You're getting the latest features. And because we are subscription-based, we are not walking away from you. If you feel we are not coming up to scratch, you can always tell us or you can walk away. So we give you that flexibility of what you actually want, discovering that and then telling that to us so that we deliver it to them. So I think the story that we are overall trying to tell is that it's a very empowering journey that you can come on with us. And if you get into that journey, you will realize that what you are doing right now, you can do so much better with so much more productivity, so much more efficiency, and so much more delight on the part of not only your customers, 
but all of your stakeholders, including employees, you know, being in touch with your employees now is one of the biggest things that we have. During the pandemic, we saw that, you know, employees, it was so important for us to handhold them because there were a lot of youngsters. And this is especially true of a company like ours, where there are a lot of youngsters who really didn't know, you know, they had no anchor to anchor them in place. They had come out of college. They had never visited an office and yet they were working in an office for two whole years. It means how do you get them merged into the DNA? All of that can be done only through digital because digital is something that will allow you to reach out and, you know, really get to them at any place possible. I'm not again discounting the physical world. The physical is also very important. Frankly speaking, you know, the joy when people started coming into office was palpable, but you know, that joy lasted for the first 10 days. After that, again, attendance <laughs> started falling. So obviously, there is an advantage to physical as well as digital. And we need to come up with that perfect model of the hybrid world. We haven't come anywhere near that. But definitely, that is very important.